This Week with Bob Mueller on News 2. This week. That is the balance, and that is the strategy that we're going to use going forward. We have to find a way to do that. I think we can. Governor Lee calls a special session on public safety to begin in late August. We should be able to drop our babies off at school or let them go to a shopping mall without in the back of our mind worrying, am I going to pick them up today? Parents of Covenant students are urging lawmakers to tighten gun laws during the session on public safety. If there is some underlying uh, dysfunction between someone and what sex they are, that is something that needs to be addressed from a mental health perspective. New laws take effect in July, many impacting the LGBTQ community. We usually know where in, uh, violence is coming from. News 2 hosts the first televised candidate forum of the Nashville mayoral race. We need to support our police force. And we continue our conversations with mayoral candidates tonight. We hear from Heidi Campbell, who leads the field in a just released poll. Hello again and welcome to another edition of This Week. State Senator Heidi Campbell leads in that first poll of the 2023 Nashville mayoral election. You will hear from her tonight. Also, News 2 airs the first televised candidate form of the election. Covenant school parents, weeks from that mass shooting, push for what they call common sense gun control. But we begin with Governor Lee, who set a date for the special legislative session, not on gun control, but what he calls public safety. With Governor Bill Lee scheduling special session for August 21st, the conversation now turns to what will come out of it. He says it'll be a combo of trying to preserve Second Amendment rights while also keeping guns out of the hands of dangerous people. That is the balance, and that is the strategy that we're going to use going forward. We have to find a way to do that. I think we can. But Republicans have consistently said they won't consider any sort of protection order to remove firearms. And I will not support any kind of red flag law or order protection. Instead, they say they'll be focused on mental health. Whether they choose to commit that heinous act with, with uh, guns or an automobile or a fertilizer bomb, we need to be recognizing that there are people in a mental health crisis and they need treatment. Democrats agree mental health is important, but also want to see some gun reform. I would hope that we would have legislation dealing with emergency risk protection orders. I would hope that we would have legislation uh, come out and be passed dealing with high capacity magazines. They want serious gun reform, but realize passionate feelings after large protests are fleeting. Plus, they're in a super minority, so Republicans will have to give for them to achieve anything. It's disappointing, and I, I don't understand why someone ran for office to come down here and to do nothing. Still, Lee says a compromise is possible. I've asked lawmakers to consider options. We'll be working on that all summer long, and uh, I, I, think we'll, I think we'll find an answer to that. An answer that remains to be seen. In Nashville, Chris O'Brien. Some Covenant school parents have been pushing for what they call common sense gun legislation since the school shooting. News 2's Tori Gessner shares their goals for the special session. They're rallying cries from educators and anti-violence activists. But Elaine Isinger's plea is personal. I would not wish sitting for hours wondering whether your kid is alive on anyone. A covenant parent of a fourth grader. March 27th is a day she'll never forget. Six weeks later. I can't speak to how every parent is moving through this time, but for the parents that I've been interacting with and collaborating with on this advocacy effort, uh, we're kind of turning our pain into purpose. Isinger knew the steps to take after working in the Tennessee state legislature for the past decade, joining Covenant parents to advocate to other organizations and lawmakers in a nonpartisan effort to make Tennessee safer. There's proof they're making progress. Governor Bill Lee announced legislators will gather for a special session to talk gun reform August 21st, encouraging them to pass laws that keep Tennesseans safe and protect the right to bear arms, something the Covenant Parents Advocacy Group agrees on. I think you'd be hard pressed to find a parent among us that is for infringing on anyone's Second Amendment rights. We want everyone to have the ability to exercise and enjoy those while also protecting the most vulnerable among us. We should be able to drop our babies off at school or let them go to a shopping mall without in the back of our mind worrying, am I gonna pick them up today? Tori Gessner, News 2. 
With the legislature adjourned, several new laws go into effect July 1st. Many affect the LGBTQ community. Here's state capitol reporter Chris O'Brien. It's hard to miss Jace Wilder with his jet black hair and mutant tattoo. I actually got it uh, when I was 18 and seeing people treat me like a mutant, it felt more appropriate to take pride in that label and to recognize that it's not a bad thing to be different or a bad thing to be considered mutant. Wilder is transgender and has seen a spate of legislation affecting his community pass this session. We're absolutely going to see more suicides. Some of that legislation has come from Brentwood Republican Representative Gino Bolso. Certainly, I can envision a lot of pain being associated with being someone and perhaps wanting to be the other sex. But his solution is different than Wilder's. If you are a girl, you are intended to be a girl. If you were a boy, you were intended to be a boy. And if there is some underlying uh, dysfunction between someone and what sex they are, that is something that needs to be addressed from a mental health perspective. Bolso contends his bill to officially define sex as what you were born as does not affect the transgender community. Instead, he says it's just to line up our code with previous laws. Is this an anti-transgender bill? No. Uh, frankly, the legislation we, we passed this year has been very pro-family. Wilder disagrees, citing the importance of language and acceptance. But mutant or not, he says his community belongs. From the science and everything, yeah, maybe my identity is mutant. That's fine. I belong here, though. I'm still a Tennessean. A Tennessean, Wilder says, who has a vote. In Nashville, Chris O'Brien. Now to our This Week cover story. Two firsts this week, the first poll of the mayoral race and the first televised candidate forum, Nashville Voices, the mayoral race, which I moderated. Ten candidates took part. You will hear their answer to solving violent crime. But first, the results of an independent poll on the race by the Tennessee Firefly. Nashville's mayor's race is in full swing. The first independent poll of the race was released this week. It shows a strong contest with State Senator Heidi Campbell leading the pack with 22 percent, followed by State Senator Jeff Yarborough with 17 percent, Metro Council Member Freddie O'Connell with 15.6 percent, Metro Council Member at Large Sharon Hurt with 6.7 percent, Matt Wilcher with 6.6 percent, Jim Gingrich with 4.2 percent, Alice Rowley with 4 percent, Vivian Wilhoyt with 3.2 percent, Fran Bush with 2 percent, and others with 18.8 percent. If no one receives 50 percent of the vote plus one, there will be a runoff between the top two vote getters. Election day is August the 3rd. We usually know where in, violence is coming from, and if we disrupt the social networks that have that happening with a mix of law enforcement, social services providers in the community, we can make incredible strides. 30 districts get to live in almost peace and five get to live in hell. And so what we're going to do in six months is create strategic plans for those five districts with the highest crime rates. We need to make sure our veteran force to keep illegal guns off the street, to stop the illegal break-ins that lead to, to, to guns being stolen and the violence is creeping up in our neighborhoods. We need to support our police force and make sure that we get our police force what they need so they can do their job. But this also means that we don't expect our, our police to do things that they're not qualified to do. We need to have um, social interventions and violence interrupters. Two thirds of the crimes that are com uh, reported are never cleared. And so victims are becoming more afraid and criminals are becoming more bold. We have to reset from a criminal justice system to a victim justice system. It's unfortunate that we have to wait until August for a special session for something that is happening today. It happened yesterday. And between now and August, something else could happen. I pray God that it does not. Make sure that our after school programs and our aftercare programs are fully invested. Why is crime going up after COVID? There's absolutely nothing to do. When there's nothing to do, there is crime. As mayor, I will focus on three things. First, properly funding the police force. Second, I'm gonna work tirelessly to lobby our state for common sense gun legislation. Our police force is underfunded right now, understaffed, and we need to better utilize the resources that we have. 
We have commissioned police officers responding to minor traffic accidents. The officers that we have, we need to be sure that they are engaged with the community. Working with those grassroots organizations that are on the ground, working with those kids. We're gonna to have to restore hope into our families and build that family structure. Because crime comes because of the rebellious or because of a cry for help. Stay with us. This week continues in a moment and a conversation with Nashville mayoral candidate Heidi Campbell.